Thank you, Raghav and Pallavi, for the introduction. As uh, mentioned, the topic is minimalism or rhetoric. And I will take you through the various strategies, the various styles of writing, and why not one writing style is an obvious option. Minimalism is not uh, something which is a very new concept. <clears throat> However, to make things uh, very streamlined, we will touch upon what minimalism is. Then, we will discuss the rhetoric and the maximalism. And why do we uh, move towards minimalism or why are we moving away from minimalism? A retrospection on what we have and what best we can provide to the priority, which is our user, and how can we <clears throat> provide the best information experience using the alternatives we have. Not but that's last the least. Uh, I would also like to uh, focus my liberty as right now. So what is minimalism? Again, since it's not a very new term and it's, it's quite trending across all the industries, it's nothing but it's a way of writing, it's a style of writing where you do not instruct the user from the, uh, the overview of the right from the overview of the, uh, the product to the definitions and the demonstrations and the examples and the mock exercises. No. We do not hand hold the, the user till he performs all the tasks, but we actually strip the tutorial out of the uh, the items which are not really required or the items which are very obvious and focus on the actual steps. So this is what minimalistic style calls for. It allows the user to experiment and to exercise their problem solving skills and it's brief and it excludes some or all of the components found in the conventional procedures and standard tutorials. But why do we need minimalistic approach? As uh, we all know that it's, a, it's an IT world and uh, we as technical writers and authors are spread across the globe. Uh, demographically we are different, ethnically we are different, so if we all are different and we are based in different parts of the world, our writings will look different. To avoid that, to make it more streamlined and um, error-free, we use a minimalistic approach. And since uh, we also know that a majority of the users which are, who are using our technical products, they are technical as well. And most of them are very tech savvy. So we, we, we present a very condensed way or a very brief way of a writer where he doesn't have to perform the mock exercises and uh, perform and then perform the tasks. So this makes our content very precise and this also helps a user uh, perform the tasks, perform the actions using his own experience rather than being handheld towards the end of the document. Uh, and the most obvious one, the time saver and the word count saver. This, is, uh, this saves a great deal of uh, word count, uh, and uh, especially in the translation industry. Now, rhetoric and maximalism, which is another extreme way of writing. Now, when minimalism came into existence back in 1950s, we also had this maximalism movement. But uh, that is something that we are definitely not vouching for because it is uh, um, used by contemporary writers where they use, uh, make use of heavy literary tools, similes, metaphors, a lot of idioms and proverbs, so we did that, that is definitely not what we are looking at. Uh, however, 
I would like to uh, mention that rhetoric style, which is a, uh, you can you can say that's a child of maximalism and minimalism. Um, we definitely use this across industries. We use this when we are copywriting, when we are creating web content or writing blogs. Instead of just mentioning or instead of just asking the user to dial a particular number, when he gets stuck in between, we rather say, we would love to help you. Please get back on this number. Or reach out to us. Feel free to reach out to us. So that's, that's a nice way of, nicer way of writing where the user uh, gets connected directly to the problem solver. So that is another way of writing, the rhetoric style. Now, why uh, why are we moving away from it? Why am I moving away from minimalism? And why, and why did we actually move towards minimalism? Now, the most important factor which brings in improvement in this world or, or in this changing world <coughs> is the need for change. Change is an inevitable thing. And progressive change is very important towards the improvement of any product, any software, any industry. And a physical user would not come up to us, hey, writer, I do not like this way of writing. No. Simply when a documentation is not catering to his use, he would simply Google up and then find his answers. So that's how it is. So we moved away from conventional style of elaborate writing and moved towards minimalism. So that there is a, it's time that we question the rules, the set rules. We bend them, we bend the rules, and we try to find out and figure out something new, how things can be better. So we realize that with minimalism, if you try to retrospect, I'm sure the user would be able to complete the task definitely, but may not be able to complete the task as well. So, um, we, are, we as writers would not be very assured about the user's knowledge quotient. The way we are diverse, users are also diverse. So we're definitely not sure if the users are able to understand what we are trying to say or the user is actually following what we are trying to say. Instead of saving, uh, instead of believing that my minimalistic approach is saving users time and is not skimming through pages, there is a possibility that the user is wasting a lot of time in trying to skim through pages and still not able to find an answer. And this brings in frustration with the product. Now, this retrospection this can be continued. This can be continuous again, but I would like to add that this risk of users not being able to solve a particular action, uh, complete a particular action or uh, perform a set of steps, this also depends on what information we have removed, what uh, content or what which detail or which section of the chapter has been stripped off. So uh, this definitely depends on that. Again, as I mentioned, we do not have the full profile of all the users. Neither do our organizations have. We all have a very fuzzy uh, feel of who our readers would be. So we cannot guarantee on that. We cannot guarantee on the thinking ability of our diverse users. So this uh, in a nutshell means that as a minimalistic writer, our designer, my job is really difficult. Balancing between clear content and a brief content and there are uh, very um, adequate chances that we might lose on, lose out on information which is supposed to be there. So why and who are we doing this for? We are doing it for our ultimate stakeholder which is the user. Who is the reader? The user is the priority, right from development of a product to the maintenance to the release and the documentation. So how how can we actually make a documentation stand out? 
Now the documentation must be such that it's like a facility tour of the application for the user. A very smooth, good guidance, quick guidance. And the content should be such that the user would want to get on to the next chapters as soon as possible. So that because he's so engaged with the content, he's so much into the documentation. That's the documentation satisfaction that I'm talking about. And this is how the, the user will be fully answered, fully informed, and fully satisfied. Now more for an answered user. Why do we want, and how do we want, and how do you, how do you actually uh, do more about it? One, A, human touch and empathy. We need not be a, a very monotoned text assistant to the, to the customer, to the user. It has to be such as if the user feels that the person or the instructor instructing me with the task is standing next to me. It also has, the content also has to be such that it should have a generous use of the visual tools, the graphics, use of second persons, etc. An interactive help or an on-screen guide, chatbots are such examples. Now, I would like to give an example of um, a laptop charger that uh, made me uh, turn 360 degrees. There was this HP laptop, uh, which was an imported one again. Um, and one fine day, the chapter went push on. So, I had to use it. I tried plugging in my Dell laptop's charger to it and it worked perfectly. But it would only charge the laptop till the battery was drained and, and it would not uh, charge my HP laptop till the battery was drained to 30%. So, now uh, this went on for a few years. I, had, I continuously used my charger in such a way. But I really wanted to know why it happens. <laughs> then uh, very recently I went to a repair shop, it was a mobile repair shop and uh, the person there in the shop actually gave me the answer that um, Madam, there is a combination of voltage and ampere which is not uniform for all the laptops. It's not a standard thing and I believed that this is a standard thing and it would go across laptops. But no, this doesn't. Uh, happen. Why? Now I had to face a situation because the guide supplied to me uh, with, with the HP laptop, it only read that only use HP charges. But why? It didn't tell me that. This is why I went round and round and round and then I came to get the answer. So this is uh, an, uh, an instance that I wanted to mention. So what alternatives we have? First, zestful writing, layering, and performance support help. We'll uh, talk about it in brief in the upcoming. Zestful writer is uh, very close to, and uh, again, I would like to emphasize that zestful writing and layering are built on top of minimalistic approach. It's not different. It's not something out of the universe. It is definitely from the tech writer's world. So uh, even when you have to record an error or talk about an error, we can use as full writing. It's a way of generous writing where, where um, you have a set of uh, words, uh, uh, style guide kind of thing. So you can use everything from the guide, everything from the stylist, but you have a liberty of playing around it. And you have the liberty of when and where to use it. Now this kind of writing is, um, is done keeping in mind that the user is a ninth grader. Now, who is a ninth grader? A ninth grader is someone who would really want fast content and very zooming content, but because he's impatient, he doesn't have much of time, but the content has to be very lively. 
So this is when restful writing comes into picture. Then we have layering. Layering is called the safety net for minimalist uh, documentation. This is again built on top of now minimalistic way of writing. Although it provides notes, audio, definitions, exercises, mock examples, so on and so forth. Now, again, as, as we spoke about this, that no um, style, no particular style is the ultimate style. So this is definitely not the ideal solution. And minimalists, they totally reject the idea of layering. Uh, because they find it too extensive and uh, highly detailed. We have another alternative, which is a performance support help. Now, this provides a high, a very high level of uh, assistance to the user. But the, the tutorials are limited. And this is why the users undertake their own work. The difference behind the difference is the, or, or the, the point that stands out is the ongoing dialogue with the uh, with the assistant. So as in when the user is filling up a form, for example, and he's stuck at a field's name, field's title, and he's not able to understand or is not able to understand the data type or, uh, you know, for example. So that is when this dialogue starts with the online assistant. And uh, the assistant either uh, explains to him or tells him, quickly tells him the the meaning of the field name or fills the form for him. So uh, this is how uh, it really helps the user and, call, and it cuts on the word count as well. And the two main types are wizards and coaches. We all know about the Microsoft Word. So why do we need so many alternatives, so many options? Why? For the user, right? The user and his experience is, for the, is of the utmost importance. Be it product experience or the interface experience. Now, the interface experience is also brought to you by information experience. Technical documents are uh, not just and should not be just about uh, the end user referring the documents. Right? These parameters they also help the readers and. Uh, not only the readers, but the product owners as well, understand how mature a documentation is. Uh, secondly, we technical writers, we are also marketing tools for the potential customers. We have heard, of, uh, for example, I have come across a score documentation and they are, I find them awesome. Tomorrow, if I go in for a Cisco product, I'm sure that I'll be fully answered by the questions that are for the tasks that they have documented. They are not st strictly minimalistic, but they have a lot of assistance provided through those tutorials. And this is how when you supply a fully fledged document, not, I would not call a lengthy one, but a fully answered, uh, you have, when you have a fully answered user, you have a fully informed user. So this brings in the information experience and a lasting experience. All about it said and done. Everything for the user, everything for the company and tweaking and customizing uh, and looking beyond the horizon and everything. But as we all are writers, we all have a set of aura um, given liberty to, for as, at our disposal. Isn't it? Minimalism or for that matter, any alternative that we go for, it does not uh, advocate or it does not go, asks you to do away with your illustrative elements. Just that you should know how and when to use it. A careful choice of the words, careful choice of the various uh, sections of your documents and the various elements that you provide with the document. So... As a technical writer, as a content creator, speaker, my liberty, for that matter, our liberty may not be the supreme priority, but it is also not subjected 
be compromised it is nothing it is something which should not be compromised with that is it uh, thank you and i hope you have you had a good experience with this presentation thank you